guys, I'm Lane Vids, and this is my friend Zeke. Hey guys. Today, we're making a homemade forge. Yes! It's time for a science experiment. So this is all the stuff you need to make a homemade forge. You're gonna need two metal buckets, one to go inside the other one. You're gonna need some plaster of Paris and some sand, preferably some fine uh, grit sand. You can do a one-to-one -one mix with this. You're also gonna need some water. You're gonna need some propane. I recommend creepy gloves, of course, tools. We have some other safety gloves too as well. Fire! The first thing we need to do is find just the right place to stick the torch through into the forge. Now this is gonna be an upright forge, so we want the torch to come through the bottom part at an angle in. The way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna line up just about at the bottom quarter and we're gonna put a circle around our torch head. Now that I have the circle drawn out for the size of the torch head, I need to find something a little bit bigger than that to act as a placeholder for whenever the plaster is drying. We don't want plaster getting stuck in our torch head and it's kind of corrosive as it dries so we don't want to rust the, uh, the, cup, the torch head. So I have this just simple piece of pipe here and I'm gonna then overlay a circle on top of that. Hole is done. Does it fit? So we don't want plaster uh, being lost down our, our pipe right there. Plug it up. So now we're gonna mix up our plaster with some sand and the sand helps to reflect the heat back in and the plaster uh, insulates. So the plaster is caustic uh, and so it will actually, it, it'll put a burn on your hand. You can feel it, it'll get really hot as it begins to mix with the water. There's a chemical reaction that happens. So safety first this time. So we're gonna do a one-to-one -one mixture of sand and the plaster. And then when we add the water, we want it to be a, a nice thick doughy consistency. So now we're gonna pour and stir. We only have a, a handful of minutes to work with the plaster. We want it to be about like that. Like cement. Yeah, kind of like a cement. We're gonna pack it inside here. Now, one of the things a lot of people are having trouble with with their placeholder was getting it out whenever uh, the, the um, stuff had started to harden. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a little <laughs> bit of cooking spray to spray on it to lubricate it so it won't uh, stick to it as much and we'll be able to pull it out easier from the plaster. You can get the old finger. So one of the other issues people had was getting um, their placeholder um, out of the plaster again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a plastic bag inside. That way we can just pop it right on out. And even if the plastic bag stays, it'll disintegrate really quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're gonna place it in. We'll wobble it around. So now we're gonna let this dry for about 20 minutes. Next what we need to do, boy that got heavy, <laughs> is remove our stopper from the inside. Hopefully it made a good job of making a nice round hole. Mm -hmm. Let's see if our Pam did the trick. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, yeah, look at that. Woo. Perfect. You can give us all credit for everybody else who makes one of these. <laughs> you can click like here. Uh-huh, click like here. Pam is the trick. Now we're taking out the bag. Now we're going to take out the bag. Start at the top and just kind of work our way in a circle. Very nice. Burn. Yeah, cool, look at that. That is a perfect hole. And lastly, we'll just make sure, again, great, that our torch head is gonna go through. There it is, came right to the edge. So next thing we'll do, now that we have the torch inserted into our forge, is we're gonna do a very low temperature uh, burn on it because we wanna just finish drying out. We don't wanna trap any uh, moisture bubbles inside the plaster because as the water begins to heat up, it'll uh, evaporate and expand and it'll start popping plaster out. And we don't want any hot plaster popping at us. Nope, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> nice. You may want to experiment with different torch heads. The primary thing you need is that the torch air breather holes are outside of your forge. You don't want them to be clogged inside of the plaster, you want them outside. 
Uh, this is a unidirectional flame, so it's going to shoot a longer flame out. You may want to experiment with a, a, an Omnia multi-directional one that has a shorter flame and uh, just a, a wider one. So we'll see how this one goes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our crucible our can inside. and hope that we get enough uh, surrounding flame there. So we'll go ahead and put this lid on it just to trap some heat in. We'll start putting some uh, stuff in here to see if it'll melt. I'll go ahead and lift the lid thing. It's gonna Place that in. See what we can do. Thumbs up if you think it's gonna work. <laughs> So we're not reading what we should. We got about just under 300 degrees inside of here, about 400 on the outside, not the thousand degrees that, <laughs> that we, we need. Yeah. All right, guys. So we think our torch head is not the right kind of torch head to make this uh, happen. So we are gonna bring it out into the yard. We're gonna try it with charcoal because we saw some people online using charcoal, and I think Zeke said he has a smaller crucible that we can use, and we'll see if that works. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've held it here on any of the, the previous videos about what type of torch head. Um, it, it turns out that you need that omnidirectional one where the flame comes out more like a crown, whereas this one comes out more like a long sword. So uh, we've opted to more primitive, rugged means <laughs> of fire. And that's what we're going to do with this charcoal briquette. And then we're going to use a hair dryer to pump oxygen in. And this will be real like a, a blacksmith's forge. Uh, and that should give us the temperature we need to melt some aluminum cans. Here we go. How hot down? 450 in the, in the can. Down there, maxed out. Maxed out, nice. Making molten metal now. All right guys, the cans are melting. And so we're gonna put some more pure aluminum that Zeke has in here. There's the cans. So there's a lot of impurities in aluminum cans. And so that's kind of why it's that chunky looking stuff down there. So we'll go and try to put some more uh, pure aluminum inside. That's hot. Wow. We have down here some molten aluminum. Molt, look at that, yes. Now you know you've got it hot when you can just push. And it melts. <laughs> That's insane. High five. Woo! All right, guys, it worked. The briquettes work. Uh, so if you guys want to make a homemade forge, remember, you need, what kind of tip was that on the? You need a multi-directional propane torch tip. There you go. So if you want more videos from us, make sure to click that subscribe button. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna take this molten aluminum and we're gonna pour it inside a lemon. So click that subscribe button if y'all wanna see that video. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for being shiggity shank. Now, is that gonna be hard to take out? Can of course. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it a little bit bigger, why don't we? That might be a good idea.